I often see AEW getting ridiculed as all petite wrestling. That isn't helped at all by recent comments by Kevin Nash that the AEW roster looks like a bunch of indie geeks. At the same time, AEW fans call WWE wrestlers a bunch of juice heads. As an impartial fan, I feel like the Hawk can cast a fair judgement on this one. I admit, I was one that wanted the wrestlers to be bigger over the years, but I've mellowed on this since. I'll just take some good variety, because variety is the spice of life like a punch to the gut. I'd like to know though, does size matter at all in 2024? So, we're about to take a recent episode from each company and compare the roster from the two shows to help us answer the age-old question, is it really all petite wrestling? And just for the record, no, I don't care who's on the roster if they ain't using them. They may as well not exist. We're only talking about who turned up on this show. The other thing is, I'm not going to try and give actual heights and weights. We're just going to give the build heights and weights. But just for clarity, almost all wrestlers lie about it to make them seem more impressive. Usually their real height is 2-3 to three inches less. Sorry if that offends anyone, but that's just a fact of the wrestling business. I've tried to make this one as fair as possible by choosing two shows with a similar amount of matches. It was hard comparing the ladies, as WWE seems to put on a lot more women's matches. Plus, I'm not even sure people are interested in the heights and weights of the women. And also, come on, that information isn't as readily available. Because it's rude to ask a woman's weight. The Shove It Squad are gentlemen, so we won't be going there. It's not really a talking point anyway, is it? So we won't count them. Enough talking. Round one. Fight! The most recent collision starts out with Brian Danielson and Claudio Castanoli. This is a very mixed team as Danielson is billed on the AEW website as 5'10 and 210 pounds, whilst Claudio is billed at 6'5 and 232 pounds. They take on the top flight team of Darius Martin at 5'10 and 198 pounds, and Dante Martin who is 5'10 and 187 pounds. This gives AEW an opening height of just under 6 foot and an opening weight of 206 pounds. Let's see how Raw performs. The show starts out with the Judgment Day segment. Clearly the big man here is Damian Priest who is 6 foot 5, 250 pounds. Unfortunately, the rest of his crew aren't going to do him any favors. Dominic Mysterio is 6 foot 2. 215 pounds, Finn Balor is 5 foot 11, 190 pounds, and JD Madonna, who is 5 foot 10, 180 pounds. I just don't believe any of those last three, but that isn't what this video is about. This gives Raw a starting average weight of 209 pounds and a height of 6 foot 1. Raw just about shades the opening exchange. Round 2 Fight! Back over on Collision, Will Ospreay walks out for a match. He was actually one of the targets of Kevin Nash's recent comments, and part of the reason I felt the urge to make this video. Whilst Osprey is not the biggest dude, I wouldn't exactly say he's in bad shape. I guarantee 90% of you watching right now aren't in as good a shape as this guy. So I found it strange that Nash targeted him out of everyone. Anyway, Will Osprey is billed at 6 foot 1, 231 pounds. I know for a fact he isn't that tall, because I stood near him at a recent TNA show, but that's besides the point. Osprey will face Lee Moriarty, who is a legend when he faced CM Punk in that one video and you all hated on me for it, but he's 5'11", 185 pounds, which doesn't sound like much. But he is accompanied by Shane Taylor, who is 6'1", and 338 pounds. Also in this segment is the Undisputed Kingdom, Roddy Strong, 5'10", 200 pounds, Matt Taven, who is 6'2", 219 pounds, and Mike Bennett, who is 5'11", and just 200 pounds. That doesn't seem right. Anyway, that gives AEW a second round segment of 6 foot and 228 pounds. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Let's see if Raw can top that. Sheamus makes his way out. He's been absolutely slaughtered for his condition since returning to the WWE. Yeah, he has a little bit of fat in his waist, but he's still bigger and badder than 99% of people watching. He's most likely just come off the gear, and that's the problem with Royd. Once you stop, the weight comes back on, so effectively it's difficult to ever stop them. Plus, he has been injured, so he's possibly not working out as good as he used to. Sheamus stands 6 foot 4, 267 pounds, and he faces an angry Viking called Ivar. This big bastard is 6 foot 2, 305 pounds. That gives an average for that segment of 6 foot 3, 286 pounds, and Raw clearly wins that one. Round 3 Fight! AEW really is starting to pull out all the stops to win this war because they realise they desperately need to win this next round because out next it's Brian Cage. The big muscle man isn't the tallest at 6 foot, but he does weigh in at 278 pounds of lean muscle mass. 
He teams with the Gates of Agony, who are another two big dudes. Bishop Khan, who is also 6 foot and 235 pounds, whilst Taylor Leone, who is 6 foot 4, 301 pounds. Now this is a squash match, and it's against the funniest looking jobbers of all time. I think they're supposed to be like Jed Ward, if anyone remembers those weirdos. Anyway, none of these three guys are a part of the roster. Squash matches are supposed to be against people who look worse than you do, so it all makes sense, and I won't be counting these jobbers in my calculations. They're not signed. However, who I will be including is Swerve Strickland, who attacks the first three at the end of the match. Swerve is 6 foot 1, 201 pounds? You'd think they would have inflated that weight a little bit higher, and they could probably get away with it. Anyway, that gives an average for this AEW segment of 6 foot 1 and a half, and a whopping 253 pounds. This isn't supporting the all petite narrative at all. There's a lot of people in this next WWE segment. The Awesome Truth have reformed and they are the tag team champions. The Miz is 6'2", 220 pounds, whilst Rob the Truth Killings is also the exact same 6'2", 220 pounds. They observe another one contenders tag match between three teams, DIY who are Tommaso Ciampa, 5'11", 201 pounds, and Johnny Gargano who is 5'10", 190 pounds. The New Day, Xavier Woods, 5'11", 205 pounds, and Kofi Kingston, who is 6 foot, 212 pounds. And finally, the Creed brothers, Julius Creed, who is 6 foot 3 and 230 pounds, and Brutus, 5'11", 285 pounds. It seems like AEW is about to win this skirmish. WWE ends this segment with an average height of 6 foot and an average weight of 220 pounds. So for the very first time, AEW wins a segment. Congratulations, a punch to the gut. Now who's all petite wrestling? More like we wrestling entertainment. Round four. Fight. Things quickly go downhill for AW as Daniel Garcia comes out to drag down the averages. Or not, because he apparently stands six foot tall. And he only weighs 187 pounds. He faces KM. Wow, who remembers him from TNA? I thought he was dead. Don't call me a liar. KM is apparently a backstage producer, and he is signed to AEW, so we can count him. I'm surprised this guy never went on the gear. He would have been an absolute monster. Instead, he's slightly flabby, which is what roast wrestlers would look like without the trend. Anyway, he's 6 foot 5, 238 pounds. We unfortunately can't count the fan who climbs into the ring. So that gives the segment 6 foot 3, 212 pounds overall. Not much is going on with Raw, the only new face appearing being Drew McIntyre, and he is not a small man by any standard. 6 foot 5, 265 pounds. Raw wins? Round 5. Fight! Next down AEW Collision is FTR, Dax Harwood at 5 foot 10, 223 pounds, and Cash Wheeler also at 5 foot 10, 223 pounds. Apparently, they're exactly the same. Harwood takes on the Dynamite Kid's nephew, Tommy Billington. He is not signed to AEW, but he will be soon. And this was not a squash match, so they obviously have plans for him. For those reasons, I will be including the Dynamite Kid. He is 5 foot 9, 225 pounds. Is that even possible? It had been going quite well for AEW, but this segment is certainly going to drag the stats down. Just like your girl on a Friday night whilst you're asleep. That gives an unimpressive 5 foot 9 and a half and 223 pounds. Surely Raw can at least beat that height. Well, it seems that AEW are going to be up against the undisputed American Nightmare Cody Rhodes appropriately, who is 6 foot 2, 220 pounds. He's just here to do a promo before a match, pitting main event Jey Uso, who is 6 foot 2, 228 pounds, and Finn Balor, who we've already seen tonight. Nobody else new appears in this segment, so let's do the math. Both men were 6 foot 2, so that's easy, and their weight works out at 224 pounds overall. Raw just about shades it once again. Round 6. Fight! Over on AEW, the smaller men just keep coming with the not so small Okada, but Jack Perry and the Bucks. Okada is by far the largest at 6 foot 3, 236 pounds. Matt Jackson is 5 foot 10, 172 pounds, and Nick Jackson is also 5 foot 10, 178 pounds. Jack Perry is 5 foot 10, 204 pounds. Christopher Daniels walks up to scream at them. He's still a wrestler. And he is somehow 6 foot, 224 pounds. Well, it could be worse. I was worrying when I saw those names coming up. The main event on Collision sees the rated R superstar Adam Copeland take on Carlo Riley. Edge is a tall guy at 6 foot 5, 241 pounds. Carl Riley is not a tall man, but he's still 6 foot and 200 pounds soaking wet. No one else appears, so that's where we end things with the final segment giving us 207 pounds and a height of 6 foot. 
Not very impressive considering how many guys were in there. So for the very last time, let's see if Raw can get one over on AEW. Just before the Raw main event, we have an interview segment where Big Bronson Reed is handing out threats. He is 5'11", which isn't impressive, but his weight is at 330 pounds. Also in this segment is Sami Zayn defending his IC title. He stands at 6'1", 212 pounds. The challenger for the belt is Chad Gable. He is only 5'8", 202 pounds, which I believe makes him the smallest man to appear on Raw on this night. I'm not even sure anyone on AEW was billed smaller than that. So that gives us a final average segment weight of 248 pounds and a height of just under 5'11". WWE wrestlers were heavier, but AEW were taller, so it's another draw on this segment. All that's left to do is the big moment, the reason I made this video. We need to compare today's findings with the overall average. Has AEW won this war, or have WWE fans got justification to call them all petite wrestling? I honestly didn't know what to expect. The AEW roster was actually taller and heavier than I thought coming into this video. The average weight of the AEW roster on Collision came in at 220 pounds. While that isn't actually that small, I would guess it's heavier than most people watching this. It's actually getting close to the Hawks weight. The average height of the AEW roster was just over 6 foot, which does surprise me. So if a wrestler is 6 foot tall and 220 pounds, that actually makes them better than the average American male, who is 5 foot 9, 199 pounds. Still not as big as the Hawk though. This is important because wrestlers shouldn't feel like normal people. I am impressed and I'm pleasantly surprised. Even if we take two inches from where wrestlers inflate their height, they're still taller than the average American. But all of this is going to be irrelevant if AEW don't win this battle, so we need to get the WWE scores in. So we got the AEW average of just over six foot. It's not particularly exciting, but I wouldn't call it petite. Meanwhile, WWE finish up with an average height of six foot 1.3. Wow. Not a lot in that at all. Just an inch. If you need to know how much an inch is, just look down. AEW finished up with the average weight of 220 pounds. All right, the moment of truth, whose show was heavier? Raw finished with, oh, wow, 242 pounds. The WWE roster might not be much taller, but they sure have a lot more muscle, or fat. I'll let you figure out which is which. So I'm actually quite surprised. The AEW team held up better than I thought. Let the Hawk know in the comments which wrestler's height and weight did you find completely unbelievable and did AEW do better than you expected? They might not have won this war, but I think we can all stop fighting now. The shows really aren't that much different and that's an outcome I'd hope for with this one. And if you don't agree with that, I'll hit you with the stone cold stun.